The European Pursuit Fish Culture Group, or EPFC, is a thematic group within the European Aquaculture Society. It combines the efforts of more than 1,200 farmers, scientists, development agencies and other stakeholders from the European aquaculture sector to further develop the Pursuit Fish uh, production in Europe. EPFC offers workshops and technical trainings and basically networking with experts across Europe to support the growth of the sector. This technical video is our share, our commitment into further developing Pursuit fish culture in Europe. Pike perch, also known as zander, is an important new species in European aquaculture. It is farmed commercially for both restocking and consumption in seafood markets, where it is highly regarded. As with any aquaculture species, reproduction and propagation is an important aspect in the culture of pike perch. This video details the techniques employed in controlled reproduction of pike perch. Generally, three methods of pike perch propagation are practiced. Natural propagation, where fish are allowed to spawn naturally in ponds and lakes. Semi-controlled reproduction in farms, where artificial substrates may be used for egg collection. And controlled reproduction, where eggs and milt are collected separately. In the wild, adults first reach sexual maturity at between 3 and 10 years of age and undertake short spawning migrations to suitable spawning grounds. Spawning generally occurs in April to May, depending on latitude and when water temperature reaches 10 to 14 degrees Celsius. Males are territorial and excavate shallow depressions in the sand or gravel or among exposed plant roots on which the eggs are deposited. When ready for spawning, both male and female swim around quickly and eggs and sperm are released. The female leaves the nest after all the eggs are released. The male defends the nest and fans the eggs with his pectorals. In semi-controlled reproduction, spawning pairs are introduced to ponds. Artificial spawning material and nests are placed in the pond as a suitable substrate. These nests are then removed once spawning has occurred. We use uh, pike patch pond uh, culture pick stock for, for spawning in ponds. We put their substrate for spawning uh, in form of nest. After that, after a few days, we observe nest and we, when we observe spawning, we can remove this uh, nest with eggs. We put this nest with eggs to a hatchery, to tank uh, where incubation uh, done, is done and there is contrary to condition. And after six, five, six days, depending on temperature, we get uh, hatch larvae and we use this larvae for stocking to pond or for gas uh, aquaculture. Successful controlled reproduction of pike perch starts with good quality broodstock and a structured breeding program. Pike perch broodstock are generally sourced from wild sources and domesticated over generations. Broodstock should be held in suitable conditions, ensuring optimum water quality suitable diet, appropriate lighting, temperature control and sufficient space. Fish selected for spawning during the spring can be stored in ponds or tanks at ambient temperature. Spawning of fish out of season requires photo and thermal manipulation of stock. Selected broodstock must undergo a sufficient wintering period before they can be stimulated for spawning. Many facilities use computer-controlled systems to automatically adjust light and temperature to mimic natural conditions in the wild. Developing out-of-season stocks can entail adjusting these cycles over a number of years. In a modern aquaculture company, we keep the broodstock in a controlled environment. We control reproduction of the pike birds by manipulating the temperature and the light regime. The ability to have multiple spawnings a year allows us to have year-round production of juvenile pike birds. In recent years, significant progress has been achieved in the development of techniques for the controlled reproduction of many fish species with the application of different spawning agents. 
It is essential, however, regardless of the spawning techniques used, to ensure an adequate wintering period close to natural conditions with sufficient time at low temperatures to ensure proper gonadal development and oocyte maturation. During the controlled reproduction, we are trying, we are involving the methods and the techniques which allows us to promote the final oocyte maturation up to ovulation. And in this way, we are able to get uh, eggs of high quality from the fish at, uh, at any time of the year. To achieve that, we have to first uh, subject the fish to the phototermal manipulation, which involves uh, chilling the water temperature, shortening the day, leg the day length, and in this way we are able to uh, simulate natural conditions. Just after, we are, um, we are simulating uh, spring-like conditions, which allows us our fish to mature. When the wintering period has been completed and the water temperature has risen to 10 degrees Celsius, it is important to check the maturation stage of the oocytes. A catheter sample should be taken of each female to correctly assess the appropriate time for application of spawning agents. As with any manipulation of fish for spawning which requires handling, anaesthetic should be used. There are six identifiable stages of oocyte development in pike perch, which are used to assess maturation. In stage 1, the germinal vesicle, or GV, is situated in the oocyte centre, and oil droplets are barely visible. By stage 2, we have the beginning of GV migration, and the beginning of coalescence of the oil droplets, which are easily visible. In oocytes which have reached stage 3, the migrating GV has reached nearly half of the oocyte diameter and oil droplets are clearly visible. At stage 4, the GV is located over half the oocyte and a large oil droplet is clearly visible with visible smaller droplets. By stage 5, the GV takes up more than half the oocyte. Finally, at stage 6, oocyte samples taken for analysis are macroscopically transparent, there is no visible GV after being placed in serous solution, and oocytes are at the pre-ovulation stage. A catheter sample after the wintering should show more than 90% of fish in stage 1 if oogenesis has been completed properly. Oocytes should also have diameter greater than 800 microns. In preparation for spawning, water temperature is allowed to rise over a period of time until it reaches 12 degrees Celsius. The temperature is then held at 12 degrees for 14 days whilst the fish acclimatise. The light schedule is kept naturally increasing during this period. After 14 days, the fish must now be again catheterised individually and the maturation stage of each fish checked. The fish are then injected with the respective dose of hormone, for example, 500 micrograms of human chorionic gonadotropin or HCG per kilogram. Following the procedure, fish at different maturation stages are kept separate to reduce handling. Fish at stage 6 should be checked every 4 hours to reduce the risk of them discarding the eggs. Fish at stage 4 and 5 should be checked after 36 hours and 24 hours respectively. They should be then catheterised again and as soon as they reach stage 6, checked every 4 hours. Fish at stage 1, 2 and 3 should be checked again after 3 days and the process repeated. Fish that are ready to spawn should be handled carefully. Eggs should flow freely and be collected in a dry container. Gentle pressure on the abdomen will release the eggs. The container lid must then be closed tightly and the unfertilised eggs kept at 10 to 12 degrees Celsius but for not longer than 30 minutes. The eggs can then be checked for cortical reaction and lipid droplet fragmentation. This enables the operator to ensure that the collected eggs are of sufficient quality to fertilise. Place a small portion of the collected eggs on a petri dish, add some water and analyse the eggs under a binocular microscope between 3 and 5 minutes following activation. Eggs which do not exhibit a cortical reaction and or which have highly fragmented lipid droplets should be reconsidered and removed from further procedures. If the eggs are good, fresh sperm should be collected with a catheter into a syringe or using an Eppendorf tube. It is important, as always, to ensure any equipment used is dry.
The quality of the sperm should be checked under the microscope at by 40 magnification. Motility lower than 65% should be discarded from fertilisation. For dry fertilisation, 1 ml of high quality sperm should be used per 100 grams of dry eggs. The eggs are gently mixed with the sperm before adding water. Activate the eggs with fresh hatchery water with a volume of about two times more than eggs and stir for about one minute to promote fertilisation. The eggs are active for about one minute and sperm for approximately 40 seconds. To prevent stickiness in the fertilised eggs, clay or tannic acid is added. With clay, eggs are stirred either in milk or water for 30 minutes and then the clay is applied. The clay particles attach to the adhesive layer, preventing stickiness. Alternatively, tannic acid can also be used after first washing the eggs for 30 minutes in pure fresh water. Once fertilised, pike perch eggs develop quickly. Within a few hours the first cleavage has finished. There are subsequent divisions until the embryo reaches the blastula stage after approximately 24 hours. There is a rapid onset of gastrulation and formation of epiboly over the next 8 hours, with the gemring being formed. By the third day, epiboly has finished and somatogenesis has begun. The optic capsules are already visible and the axis of the embryo is already well defined. Many important developmental events occur and the speciation of particular cells into important organs. The tail extends and muscles are formed. The embryo begins its first movements as the heart starts to beat. At this moment, the oxygen demand of the embryo increases substantially as the larvae gathers momentum for hatching. Eggs are placed for incubation in either Zug jars or McDonald's incubators. The eggs should move gently inside the incubators. Consistency of results is best achieved with practice, meticulous record keeping and appropriate culture systems. High quality eggs will hopefully lead to an efficient and successful juvenile production system and ultimately a successful aquaculture enterprise.